Hey kiddos, today we are going to talk about significant figures. Now sig figs are the sort of thing, sig figs, that's the sort of the AKA form. Um, sig figs are the sort of thing that um, occasionally you really bog some students down. I don't want you to get bogged down. Um, so we're gonna sort of briefly go over the why. We'll talk a lot more about the theory and practice some of the theory in class. Um, but today's um, lessons are a little explanation of, hey, what are the rules for sig figs? How do I tell how many sig figs are in something? And then we'll have another video on a second way to find how many sig figs are in something. And then we'll have a, a video on how to cal do calculations with sig figs, because that's really the important part. That's the heart of it. Um, but to be able to do the calculations, you have to be able to identify the number of sig figs. All right, so let's get started. So if I, say, was trying to uh, measure a box, let's say I had a rectangle here, and I wanted to figure out what the area of that rectangle was. Um, and hopefully I would draw a straighter rectangle than that. Uh, but let's say that I was trying to measure that. And so the only device that I had to measure it with was a, a sheet of paper, and that was my units. My unit was one sheet of paper. And so I come along and I say, okay, well, maybe that's, I don't know, about 0.7 of a sheet of paper. That's maybe half, maybe 0.45. Sort of hard to tell because my instrument isn't very precise. If I use a little bit more precise instrument where I've accurately measured out this into tenths, then I can get a lot better measurement out of that. So I come up to the bottom here and I say, okay, great, that's 0.7, about 0.70 maybe. And then if I go over here, that's about 0.4, 0 0.40 in fact. Um, and if you're wondering why I put the 0 0.40 on the end, like that seems really weird. Like why would you say something like that? Well, that's because of something called the uncertain digit. So what the uncertain digit is, is that you always go one decimal place past where your most accurate measurement was. So again, if I was measuring the height of this and I went up and said, okay, that's about 0.4, okay, then there's always, we always estimate one digit past that. Now again, if we look at that again, I'm pretty close right to the 0.4 there. And so I can estimate that that last part is 0.40. That's the uncertain digit. Any device that you use to measure with, you always have to do that. You always have to go one step past where the most, where the last gradation on your device is. So if your um, burette measures in tenths of a milliliter, then you should go to the hundredths of a milliliter because you're gonna estimate that last digit. That's the uncertain digit. Okay, great. So we're gonna pause there for a second and I'm gonna write up a couple of the rules for sig figs um, and then we'll go over some examples for them. Okay, so rule one is that all non-zero digits, and sometimes you'll see sig figs instead of called significant figures, it's called significant digits. Um, in fact, you'll see a lot of that, but I don't think sig digs sound nearly as good as sig figs. Um, so significant digits, significant figures. So anything that's not a zero in your number is always significant. So for example, um, and I'll put a little example column off to the right there. Um, so, for example, if I had a number like, um, let's just say 789 meters, okay, in that example, all of my digits are not zeros, and so every digit or every figure that's there is significant. One, two, three, there are three of them, and so I would say that we have three significant figures. All right, so rule number two Leading zeros, meaning zeros at the beginning of a number, are not significant ever. If they're at the beginning of the number, they, they don't really matter as far as the precision of the instrument. They're basically there as placeholders. So what's an example of that? So if I had a number like 0 0.0023 grams, I had a really accurate um, massing device. Um, so these zeros at the front there, so first off, what do we know is significant? Well, I know that the two and the three, those are non-zeros, okay? But what about, what about the zeros there? Well, they're leading zeros, they're zeros at the beginning, so they do not count, and so that means for this number, I've got two sig figs. So, rule number three is captive zeros. Captive zeros are significant. What do we mean by captive zeros? Well, captive zeros means that it's in between other digits that are significant, or in between non-zeros. And so, um, if we have, let's say we had um, 504 seconds, so again, if we're looking at the significance and we're applying the rules, non-zeros, no problem, we know those are significant. And so the question is, what about that zero? Well, that zero is captive, it's in between two non-zeros. And so that means that that zero is significant as well. Okay, so 
last major rule, and we'll talk really briefly about one small rule, but the last major rule is trailing zeros. So we talked about zeros at the beginning of the number, we talked about zeros in the middle of the number, so what about zeros at the end of the number? So well, here's the thing. It all depends on whether or not there is a decimal given in that number or not, okay? That's what matters as far as trailing zeros is. Is there a decimal there in that number? So I'm gonna try not to write over my face here, but I'm gonna need a little bit more whiteboard space. So I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna talk about this example. So trailing zeros. So let's say that I've got a number like 700, uh, 7,600, um, let's, I don't know, let's call that kilograms, okay? So if I've got a number like that, these two zeros are trailing, they're at the end of the number, okay? So what does that mean that they're at the end of the number? Well, there's no decimal. Now, we all know that there's a decimal implied there, um, but if the decimal isn't actually given in the number, then it means that those trailing zeros are not significant. So we would say that in this case, one, two, I've got two sig figs. Now, if the decimal, what if the decimal had been there? I mean, what if we just said 7,600, um, and then there was a decimal point there, and let me make that a little bit more prominent, okay? If the decimal point is given, then what that means is that the measuring device that we measure this with was accurate down to the one kilogram, and so that means that all of those zeros do count. So that's four significant figures, okay? What, what if you're after the decimal, okay? It doesn't really matter. As long as the decimal is there, let's say that I had 76.00 seconds. Okay, that would mean that I measured down to the milliseconds, which is entirely plausible, right? And so that means that those obviously are significant. Those are trailing. There is a decimal given, okay? And so that means that all of those numbers are significant, okay? So we're gonna stop there for this video, and then I'm gonna basically bring back these same numbers or numbers like them, because who knows, I'm pulling them out of my hat here. Um, that, and I'm gonna show you a different way to do this that I think for some of you might make a little bit more sense because there's no rule memorization, there's just sort of a, a much simpler way. If you're wondering why would I show you this way, because I think this is the more complete way. Also, like every teacher bias, it's because that's the way I learned it.